Now we have realized that clinically to differentiate the cholesterol induced dry eye from aqueous shield deficiency, Ryan. Can we further verify that clinically? Here I remind you that aqueous shield deficient dry eye can be differentiated from cholesterol induced dry eye. There are several important techniques we can further use to verify the difference between these two entities. The first technique one can use clinically is to verify conjunctival cholesis is to use fluorescein staining as illustrated here, which will show the obliteration of the tear meniscus. The second technique is to ask the patient to blink vigorously at the sleeve line examination, showing here the formation of wrinkled tissue at 6 o'clock. This wrinkled tissue disappear upon upper gaze. The third technique is to perform digital compression of the list against the globe. As shown here, the normal conjunctiva show no movement of the conjunctiva and the blood vessel and the superior and inferior bubble conjunctiva. In contrast, patient with conjunctival cholesis, the even normal blinking showing the movement and then this will become more exaggerated when the uh, pressure is pressed against the globe. And here shows another eye, a similar finding. The area tend to have more inflammation as well. And noted that the lid margin also show inflammation in this case. And here again, it's more, uh, more obvious where the inflammation in area and uh, inflamed area can be wrinkled easily by compression, and there is a fat prolapse in the region and the lid inflammation as well. Here shows the fat prolapse, it is, uh, can be demonstrated through this technique in this patient with conjunctival cholesis in the region. This is another example where the fat prolapse is seen and then the, the lid inflammation and the adjacent conjunctival inflammation, the wrinkled tissue is manifest upon digital compression. And in this eye, again, the lid margin inflammation, the uh, area conjunctival is movable just by gentle movement and then can be exaggerated upon digital compression, one can also appreciate the fat prolapse in the phonics. The nasal bubble can have showing the occlusion of the punctum and again temporal area had inflammation, the fat prolapse, as well as the wrinkled tissue upon manifest by digital compression of the eye as showing here and also here. The same technique can be used for superior bubble conjunctiva shown here. The normal conjunctiva has no movement upon the digital compression and the excursion of the lids. And you can see here a higher magnification. There is no wrinkled tissue generated. In contrast, the patient with SLK, the tissue is freely movable and can be compressed into a notable wrinkle and redundant tissue. And this area is corresponding to the filament formation, the telangiectatic blood vessels, the keratinization, and the features known for SLK, as illustrated here in this patient as well. The fourth technique to use 0.1 forceps to grab the conjunctiva right before the surgery, as demonstrated here, a tent. Uh, can be created as a result of such grabbing in the area where the conjunctival cholesis is located. Here shows the normal area and look at the difference made in the area where the conjunctiva is redundant, in this case superior phonics.